What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in to a video that is going to be all about my beauty favorites for the month of February. I think it's pretty straightforward, right? We do this every month. Let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, first let's talk about hair. I don't know if you could see it against the darker background, but there, look, look at this aggressive bun. It's large, it's in charge. I love it and it's not mine. I have been without extensions for almost a year at this point and I'm ready to get them back in. But because I did some of my own cutting at home, I'm waiting for my hair to grow out so it'll blend more evenly in with my long, long extensions. And so until then, I've really been having some serious bun envy. And in looking around at options, I stumbled upon um, INH, stands for insert name here, I believe. And I got a ponytail from them that I have not really worn as much yet. And I also got this bun and I am in love with it. It basically is like, oh, I probably should have put it on for you here today so you can see how it works. But basically it's like a little net with the hair woven into it in a bun shape. So you don't have to worry about any sort of like mechanism in there being exposed by a hair being placed wrong. Kind of like those donuts, you know, that you'd put your own ponytail, you'd put a ponytail through and wrap it around. Well, sometimes when the hair moves in a, you know, a weird way, you can see through the hair into that donut thing. This, the hair is, I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually sticking up from the center there so that all you have to do, the hair billows out, you literally just wrap it around and there's a little bungee cord that you tighten to make sure it, and combs as well to secure it into your hair to make sure it stays in place. It's not going anywhere throughout the day. And then you can really make it as tight or as messy as you want with bobby pins. I prefer a mega bun, but you, you really have that kind of flexibility. And I've had it for about a, a little over a week now and I've been wearing it nonstop because it's just such an easy updo. It looks like you took way more, you put way more effort into it than, than you actually did. It's definitely my second, third, fourth day hairstyle when I just wanna put some dry shampoo in my hair and throw it up. But now I have a nice, big, beefy bun. You know what I mean? Now let's get into makeup. Starting off with foundation. This will come as no surprise if you saw my last video where I talked all about uh, Danessa Myricks, which the brand itself has been around for a while, but it is now finally some select products are in Sephora, both online and maybe in store. I am unsure about that, but they're officially online at Sephora. And I picked up her Vision Cream Cover, which I had used a few, a sample size a couple, a year or two back and got the wrong shade, didn't really have enough product to fully understand how it worked for me. So I finally got a bigger pen. Mine is in the shade N4. And ever since using it in that video, this has been what I've been wearing nonstop. It gives this beautiful, flawless coverage. It's nice and hydrating without being overly dewy because as someone with combo skin, I definitely still worry about, uh, you know, excess oil in the T-zone, but I do want something that's a little bit more forgiving in my dry areas around my cheek. And this does that. It's very layerable, yet it still looks natural, like a second skin sort of finish. It's amazing and I love it. In the comment section of that video, someone asked if this was a mask proof foundation. Uh, not in the sense that it's not going to transfer. Like you definitely have to prime and set with a powder, maybe even with a spray, if you really want to up your chances of this being totally transfer proof. But this, this I would not put in my totally mask proof category of foundations. Not that it really wears away so much. You're just going to see that transfer in your mask. So you know some of it's coming off. It's not the worst, but it's not the most totally budge proof, if you know what I mean. But it's still a super beautiful formula. Um, for bronzer, so before I did that Danessa Myricks video, I was getting back into some serious cream products. First reaching for my Huda Beauty Tantor. This is my original one that I kept saying that I'm, I've hit pan on it long ago and I'm gonna need a new one. Still haven't gotten a new one because this one's still going strong naturally as it gets kind of pushed to the back of my collection in favor of other things, but brought it back out and have really been loving it until I picked up the Danessa Myricks cream contour and that is another really really good one. Danessa Myricks is more of a true cream formula whereas the Huda is more like a moussey sort of formula. A little bit drier, less hydrating than the Danessa. Dries down a little bit more firmly as a powder, the Huda does, as a result of its kind of drier texture. I do find that but 
I don't mind the excess, very minimal excess moisture that the Danessa Myrix has. My shade in this, by the way, is light number two, and it is what I'm wearing today all over my face. It just been, blends beautifully into the skin, and the nice thing about really any cream product I find is that unlike a powder that if you were to apply it over completely naked skin, like without foundation, powder for me sometimes clings to dry patches without sort of a cream base to blend over top of, but a cream product, you can just apply it right to your skin sans foundation and it gives you the glow or the same effect that you love about that product, but you don't need all the extra layers of like foundation or concealer or, you know, whatever it is you like to wear on top of it. So I've really been getting back into cream products and if it wasn't the Huda Beauty Tantor, it was the Danessa Myrix. I think this is, I the name of it isn't on here, but it's basically her cream, cream contour, her, just her cream contour. Really, really love this. Um, and of course, I have a cream blush that was a surprising favorite for me. Flower Beauty sent me some items. I have a couple of favorites that I've been loving that they sent. One of which is the Gel Crush Lip and cheek. This is in the shade Raspberry Crush. And I don't know why this is such a surprise to me. Maybe it's because it's been a while since I've really taken a deep dive into the flower brand since they launched. And so I'm less familiar with um, a lot of the stuff in their collection that I just didn't have high hopes for this. And boy, did it prove me wrong. This is like a very thin but pigmented uh, cream product. Like it goes on so smooth. It is what I'm wearing today, but just for the sake of seeing it built up, um, you can see it applies pretty pigmented, but when I go in with a, bl a brush, it just blends out so smoothly and evenly just right into the skin with zero effort. And it stays like that. Okay, now I gotta even it up. But it stays like that absolutely all day. And because it's so thin, it feels like nothing on the skin. It's just like, has a barely there sort of feeling. I really, really love it. The only downside I can see honestly is the scent. It has a very sweet candy-like scent and it's not a total turnoff for me, but I don't understand why it's there. Like it's on the stronger side and especially for people who might have some scent sensitivities, you know, that's not really adding anything for them except for potential irritation, you know? So I really love it and planning on getting more shades of this, especially going into spring and summer as the weather warms up and I maybe wanna wear lighter foundation, less foundation. But that's the one thing is if you are sensitive to scents, this is very fragranced. And then the other thing from Flower that I've really been loving, again, kind of a surprise to me, but for a different reason, is their Seal the Deal Luminizing Setting Spray. This is a dual face setting spray, so I think it has like an oil in it. Yeah, it says the top layer, when it's separated out like this, the top layer is primrose oil and vitamin E to lock in moisture, and the bottom layer has lilac extract and hyaluronic acid, um, so it also locks moisture into the skin. Uh, but the reason I didn't think this was gonna work out for me is because on Combo Skin, spraying these ingredients ingredients on over my makeup to me would have spelled makeup meltdown. Absolutely. And so uh, I found myself reaching for this though, whenever my base would get too powdery. Um, I've been experimenting with some, you know, setting powders, trying to get back into that, thinking that it might help polish my makeup on days when I feel like things are just not quite done, if you know what I mean. But in applying that setting powder, especially my under eyes, it just looks so dry and so cakey. And so I reached for this, hoping that it would really help everything blend all together, make it look natural, dewy, more skin-like, and it did exactly that, but no makeup meltdown. Like, I didn't notice anything negative about this. And that might change going into spring and summer. I, I am still a little cautious, a little skeptical about how it's gonna work over my combo skin as the weather warms up, but for now, I really, really love this. If you have dry, even combo skin, especially in the wacky weather we've been having where it's, you know, super cold, super windy, the allergies, the temperatures are just all over the place. And so your skin might be reacting to that and dry or just needing more moisture. This might be a good thing to reach for because so often I feel like on the days when I realize my skin is dry, it is only after I have applied something like a foundation or a setting powder to realize, huh, I probably could have used an extra layer of hydration, but at that point it's too late to go in with, you know, an SPF or a moisture, whatever. So this is a good alternative to kind of undoing and redoing your full makeup routine. So again, surprisingly really like that. It too is fragrance, not as strongly as the blush, but still 
a little bit of fragrance in there. Another, ooh, gosh, this is like the month of cream products. Uh, so I was using those and bought some new Danessa Myricks color fixes, again, for that last video that I uploaded. And that got me thinking about other cream eye products that I really like, but just haven't used enough. And so that brought me back to my Sydney Grace cream eyeshadow, specifically in the shade that I'm wearing today, which is called Vibrant Madness. This beautiful, cool, but not too cool, frosty taupe shade. Absolutely, which is like borderline metallic when you really layer it up. I sheared it out today for like a soft wash across the lids, but these things, can absolutely be layered up to be full on high shine metallic on your lids. And as a collection in general, there are quite a few multi-chrome shades in there that really deliver on being, you know, complex and multifaceted. I have, I'll link to the video where I have those shades swatched because they truly, they're just one of the best and most underrated cream shadow formulas out there. So I highly recommend uh, you go check those out. What else? It's kind of a show. Oh, fashion. I can't forget this because I'm wearing it this jacket. Oh, you can't even really see it, but look, look at that. Oh, I love that. So this, this jacket is from a brand called Ren and Glory. They do custom denim jackets. They also do custom like hand painted um, hand, like these were sewn, the sequins were sewn on the sleeves, just hand customized apparel jackets. I think they have sweats. They might even do shoes, but primarily denim jackets. That's how I found them on Instagram. This actually technically falls into the Instagram made me or someone I know buy it category. This jacket has been on my wish list for months. I found it probably like August, September of 2020. And because it was in, it was in that phase of lockdown where you'd convinced yourself that you could turn things that shouldn't be hobbies for you into hobbies for yourself. And so I told myself this, I can make this with sequins. What else are you gonna? I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't make it. Um, I actually went to like craft store, bought the things to customize a sweatshirt and it turned out comically bad, like truly, truly awful. So gave up on that dream and still kept this on my wish list. And my mom and stepdad bought this for me as a birthday present and I, I'm ecstatic about it. At first, I was a little like unsure of where and how to wear it, but I think so many of us, and I know I'm not alone here because there are memes, funny memes to back me up here on the internet, but I think we're entering into an era where anything's gonna go with what you want to wear outside to the grocery store, whatever mundane task you have to do that day because people have been so cooped up that when the time comes, you're gonna wear what you want, ball gowns, your party clothes, whatever that like special wardrobe item or category might be for you, that could very well become everyday wear. And so that's what this is gonna become for me. At first I was like, oh, it's a special occasion jacket. No, this is an everyday kind of jacket now. And I make no apologies. If you see me out, you'll know it's me because you can't miss me in this thing. So. Anywho, it's it's a it's a major favorite. And this, I forget what it's called. I will link to it down below. They have a ton of very cool different styles, but this one spoke to me because of the uh, colorful sequins on the sleeves. And I have to tell you, I don't think the uh, pictures on the website do this thing justice because these to me look like, oh, like silver kind of pastel sparkles. But when you really get it in the light, especially in the sunlight, it is so cool and multifaceted. Oh, and then on the back, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you, they're hand painted. It's called the Resolution Jacket. And I know that, I remember that now because um, there are like phrases, words on the back of this jacket that pertain to um, a res resolutions, I think is what they say on their website, but it's hand painted. All the phrases are hand painted. And then there's even a little black stripe painted up on the back of the collar, which I actually find is great for keeping the collar kind of perky and, and popped normally or so often in jackets, you know, the collar will kind of fall, but this gives you a little bit, I mean, you can, if you want to put it fully down, you can, but if you want to just like a little bit of extra attitude, that paint in the back kind of keeps it keeps it up if that's what you want. And so that, yes. Now that concludes all of my February favorites. I would love to hear as usual, love to hear what you guys have been loving for the month of February, whether it is beauty, fashion, lifestyle, you name it, let us all know down in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.